Hi, good afternoon everyone. Uh, my name is Hari. I'm uh, the admissions director at Great Lakes Institute of Management. Um, I'm doing a quick mic check here. Uh, I hope all of you can hear me. Uh, if, you have, if you're having any trouble hearing me, please do <coughs> uh, type in a message and our team will look into it. Uh, we're going to start in another uh, minute or so. Uh, there are a bunch of people who are trying to log in, so we're just waiting for them and then we'll get started. Thank you. Once again, good afternoon, um, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me on this um, webinar. Um, today, what we're going to talk about is uh, we're going to analyze, uh, you know, the uncertainty that surrounds us uh, in the IT sector. What what is causing it, and more importantly, uh, if you are an IT professional uh, today, uh, what could you be doing to future-proof your career? So, I have a very short presentation uh, at my side. Uh, we'll uh, quickly run through those slides. And post that, uh, we'll open up the floor uh, for questions and we can have a discussion. So on that note, let's get started. So I'm sure uh, all of you are reading news and you all are aware in terms of what ha what is happening um, as we see around us. And this is not something that has just started. It's been in the works for the past couple of years. Uh, we have uh, been witnessing a slowdown in uh, you know, IT, ITES as we know it. And uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, today as we stand, uh, we are standing at a crossroad where uh, the IT sector is in transition. And I'd like to call it a transition from scale to scale. Uh, so traditionally, uh, IT sector was, uh, or all IT services companies, uh, you know, the, the big ones in India, uh, like Infosys, Cognizant, TCS, Wipro, HCA, all of these guys, uh, were built on a scale model where uh, essentially the whole business revolved around how many full-time equivalents uh, can you provide on a project. Uh, but now uh, with the changing technology landscape and also the changing business requirements of their clients, there's a huge transition wherein it is no longer about how many people can you provide, but what is the skill set that your team brings to a project. So hence, this is a transition from scale to scale. Um, McKinsey, in one of its uh, <clears throat> recent reports, had mentioned that uh, you know about 40% of India's IT workforce uh, stands to be irrelevant in the next three to four years. And the reason for this is again because a large part of the IT workforce today is not trained in future-proof technologies and future-proof competencies that businesses worldwide are looking for. Uh, NASCOM, on the other hand, predicts that you know we are looking at a situation where there could be three to four lakh job losses in the IT sector in the next three years. <clears throat> and these are big, big numbers. I mean, I don't need to give you context there. It's important to understand as to what is the reason. So one reason we've already looked at, which is in terms of <clears throat> changing business requirements and how that has impacted the entire IT services model. Uh, a bigger reason also is adoption of newer technologies, such as automation, uh, which has come in a big way in technology, machine learning, artificial intelligence, you know, all these are actually contributing to things happening at scale with lesser number of resources. So for example, <clears throat> uh, uh, tasks such as, or roles such as testing, uh, you know, which have been typically driven by a manual uh, series of checklists uh, are rapidly being automated. And, and hence, that is one big area where there are, uh, uh, you know, where there is a risk of uh, maximum number of job losses and, and similar other roles where essentially automation can take over, automation is taking over. Uh, the other big shift is the shift from old technologies to new frontiers. Uh, you know, technology, uh, as technologies are getting irrelevant, 
uh, you know, companies are looking forward to newer ways of solving problems using newer technologies or newer areas uh, such as, uh, you know, machine learning, uh, analytics, data science, big data, all of these areas. And because the business requirements are transitioning into that area, uh, you know, the requirements of uh, the IT workforce is also to transition to that area. <clears throat> so what are these new frontiers that we're talking about? Uh, so some of uh, some of the trends that we see in the industry where there are there is maximum number of job creation that is happening plus the maximum number of job opportunities are uh, these include big data uh, analytics and data science machine learning internet of things artificial intelligence information security automation and also uh, fintech fintech I put there in italicized because uh, we are beginning to see uh, a lot of activity around fintech whereas of course all the other options mentioned about that are, are trends that have been there at least for the for a good five to six years and are now gathering momentum in a big way. <clears throat> but it's not all uh, doom and gloom uh, as they say you know there is uh, there is a lot of uh, positive news out there and I think that is uh, what is important that is what we all need to focus on. Uh, fact of the matter is that for all the job losses in traditional IT services there are a huge number of openings in emerging areas and it's actually interesting to see that the very same companies that are actually uh, you know cutting down jobs are also the ones that are recruiting in a big way in these other areas so for example if you take an example of Infosys or CTS or you know TCS or any of these guys uh, you know and if you take an example of a rule such as testing where you know uh, companies are phasing out a lot of people Parallelly, you'll also see that there are, there are massive requirements in terms of big data technologies, in terms of uh, data science and analytics within these same companies. Uh, and cybersecurity is uh, another example where companies are actually struggling to find them. As an example, I've quoted analytics here. Now, just compare these figures. <clears throat> analytics in India is growing at 30% per year. And contrast that with the IT sector, which has been growing at five to seven percent for the last couple of years, and and it is likely to only go in decline till they again pick up speed. So you can you can clearly see the difference of opportunity that exists. Uh, again, two reputed organizations, McKinsey and Nascom, uh, have quoted in their reports that McKinsey says that India is likely to fa uh, face a shortage of two lakh analytics professionals by 2018. That is, by the end of next year, India will. Uh, if, if we go at the current trend, we will fall short of about 2 lakhs analytics professionals as per the jobs that are there. NASCOM, on the other hand, uh, predicts that, you know, that there will be an estimated 5 lakh job openings in India for analytics and data science professionals by 2018. So just uh, as in the previous slide, we saw that the numbers of job losses are huge. A fact of the matter is that the numbers for job creations in these emerging areas are also immense. And another important fact uh, to keep in mind is that um, professionals working in analytics and data science are not only getting paid higher than their peers in IT sector, but also the growth is much, much faster. And I, I think that is a virtue of, you know, uh, the phase of adoption and growth that an industry is. You know, a conventional IT services industry, uh, which is now seeing a slowdown or it's a sluggish in nature, obviously your growth as a professional is also going to be slower as compared to a booming uh, you know sector such as analytics and big data where uh, you know companies and all kinds of companies are recruiting and they're you know trying to ramp up their talent where as professionals also you have uh, you know you have fantastic growth opportunities as as an example to understand easily you know what we often quote is that where we are today in analytics uh, data science and big data in 2017 uh, is the same as where we were in IT services sector in the early 90s. So a professional who would have come into uh, you know IT services around 94, 95 uh, has had the opportunity to build a fantastic career for himself or herself. And the same is uh, true for all those professionals who are uh, looking to and willing to skill themselves and, and enter the field of uh, emerging fields such as analytics, data science and uh, big data because the future uh, holds a lot of promise for them provided they get trained for it.
So once we look at both sides of the coin, um, you know, the realization that one should have is that everyone has a choice. You know, you have a choice. The choice is that either you can be a part of the future or you can be a relic of the past, depending upon how you wish to upskill yourself and retrain yourself. Uh, for most professionals today, uh, it is uh, mandatory that you hit a refresh uh, on your career. You take a relook at your career, irrespective of how many years you spent. You may just be starting out in your career, or you could be a mid-career professional who spent about 10 to 15 years already. Uh, you know, irrespective of all that, the changing business landscape and the changing technology landscape merits a thought from your side that you relook at it and you think about what are those skill sets and competencies that you have to build that are actually going to future proof your career. And fact of the matter is that upskilling and continuous learning is the new normal. You know, the skills that you have built that have brought you till this point in time may not be good enough to keep you going in future. So it is important that you identify what are those right skills that you should be building and then you go about in a concerted fashion uh, around building those and uh, second uh, important aspect which we try and uh, sensitize and educate a large amount of audience is that you know learning cannot be a one-time activity right you cannot look at learning as something that you did in your 20s and then you stopped that's not going to happen anymore learning has to be continuous you have to keep learning you have to keep upskilling reskilling yourself every so many years to stay relevant and to have the best career opportunities that you would like to have. So hence, uh, you know, that's why we call it that, you know, this is the new normal. Uh, you know, as professionals today, you have to get comfortable with, with this. And in fact, you, you need to do really well in this new normal. So you need to be constantly looking at, uh, you know, new skills and competencies that you can add on that are complementary to your existing skill sets. And of course, uh, not be shy or afraid of learning, but uh, you know, keep learning as as a mandate that keeps happening uh, every so often. If you look at our own, uh, you know, diaspora of alumni uh, that we have taught over the years, uh, what we see is that there are three mantras, uh, as we call it, for career success in today's time and age. The first one, and by far the biggest one, is that you have to be data proficient. You know, the consulting organization Gartner in a, in a recent report uh, mentioned something that is, uh, that is extremely important for everybody to understand. And what, what they said is that by 2020, every knowledge professional, every knowledge worker, which means every skilled worker, has to be a data scientist in some capability, right? So, of course, the extent to which you will use data uh, will change. The extent to which you will use analytics or data science will change depending upon your role, the maturity of your company and how widely is analytics adopted within your organization. But having said that, data-driven decision making is a skill set that every professional has to be very, very good at. You know, and that's why we say that it is no longer a good to have, uh, you know, credential or skill set. Today's time merit is that it's actually a must-have. You know, without being data proficient, your future is definitely in peril. The second aspect that we focus upon is that this is the age of the specialist. You know, so you have to look uh, at competencies that the market is valuing, that the market is demanding, and, you know, build your skill sets around those. Right. So, uh, you know, pick an area where you want to build expertise. And of course, as you try and do more and more research, you will realize that the industry rewards hard skills and not, you know, superficial things such as tools or languages, right? So look beyond those. Don't look for shortcuts, you know, look for hard skills, hard competencies, <clears throat> sorry, hard skills and hard competencies that you can build. Pick one of these high demand <clears throat> competencies and, you know, begin your uh, learning journey in becoming an expert in it. You know, so you have to own an area and become progressively keep getting better, better, better till you become an expert in it. So hence, your your resume as time progresses uh, has to indicate that uh, you know uh, so and so person is a specialist in so and so area, right? And I think that is those are the kind of professionals that are finding the best jobs. Those are the kind of professionals that the industry is really looking forward to. The third aspect is uh, be uh, very good in people effectiveness. 
you know so you have to be a people effective manager there is no, absolutely no way around around it you know in today's time and age work work environments are increasingly getting intertwined and complex which means that you are no longer going to be working in a silo uh, you are now working with global teams you are working with multiple teams across functions and irrespective of your role whether you are in technology or finance or human resources or or business or whatever it be you have to have to understand the business context you know ultimately every employee has to contribute to business so hence it you cannot be insulated from business understanding and expect at the same time that you're going to have a rapid career growth that's not going to happen right so hence it is important that you you develop the skill set this is not something that comes naturally to most people right so hence it is important that you look at how you can keep improving this area in this area how you can be uh, you know a better team worker a better manager a more effective leader right and and that is and especially as you get more and more senior in your career you will see that this aspect becomes so very critical uh, for success so now that we have seen um, you know uh, the current scenario understood the reasons behind it and also identified uh, you know what are these future proof technologies or competencies that one can focus on uh, you know the moot question now is that how can you bridge the gap so there are a few pointers here uh, again uh, recap from our experience of several years of teaching professionals across all age spectrum uh, age spectrums first and foremost what i want to put out there is that there is no right time to start learning you know uh, i see and more so in senior professionals where you know where they come to us and they wonder that you know they've had 15 18 20 25 years of experience and uh, isn't it a little too late to go back to school uh, the simple question is this that what is your other option right if you don't learn you become irrelevant right so uh, you know if you really want to secure your career and to grow in your career you have to learn you know we are standing at such a time and place where uh, learning has to happen right and there is absolutely no right time to start learning you know the right time is right now and uh, whether we like it or not our future depends on it so hence this sensitization is very important that you have to keep learning and don't wait for the perfect opportune moment to happen when you can start learning uh, you know and if you realize that you have to start your education you have to start it right now the second aspect is that you have to pick a competence you want to build and again and again i am using the word competence as opposed to any other term because you know that is what it is really about now you know gone are the days when uh, you know you could merely get a job because you worked at uh, you know an xyz place or you graduated from so and so institution right today the best jobs go to those people who are able to demonstrate their worth right and demonstrating a skill set is competence so you have to build a competence right first firstly uh, if you've not already identified what competence do you want to nurture you have to first do that one way to do that is to research uh, on you know do a lot of online research identify what are the skill sets that in the industry is looking for especially for professionals like you then once you have a few options that have been shortlisted in your mind you talk to your peers your managers your mentors uh, you know and understand uh, the pros and cons of each of these understand why should you be building uh, you know any one of these competencies what does the future hold for you and once you have identified uh, let's say a competence that you want to build and let's say you know if analytics and big data and data science is the competence that you are looking to build then the first and foremost thing you have to do is don't go for shortcuts we get so many thousands of people uh, you know reaching out to us every month wanting to learn analytics and the first uh, opening remark or opening statement for many of them is that i want to learn r or sas or python or hadoop uh, because for most people they are not able to distinguish the difference between analytics and a tool so hence it is important that once you have identified that this is the skill set you want to build this is the competence that you want to nurture don't go for a shortcut try to build it ground up try to build it with a strong foundation 
because the more immersive your learning gets, the more exhaustive your exposure gets in that competence, the better you will be able to demonstrate to the outer world in terms of what you have learned and what you can do in that area. And that's how you will get career outcomes that you desire. If you look for shortcuts, which is in most cases, such as analytics and so, it would be a, would be a bouquet of tools. You are essentially shortchanging your career, right? Because what happens is that tools keep changing. You know, what is in vogue, in demand today, may not be the case, you know, three years from now. And we, we have seen that even in, in what we teach in our program. So, uh, for instance, when we started out uh, about four, four and a half years back, our primary tool was SAS that we used to teach across all our analytics programs. But over a period of time, we have seen how R has uh, taken over SAS in terms of adoption by companies. And today, the primary tool we offer is R, right? There is, uh, you know, nothing to say or suggest that after three years, even this scenario may change. So hence, uh, learning a tool is important. I'm not, I'm not disputing that, especially uh, for technology professions. Yes, you have to learn tools, but that cannot be your objective or that cannot be the competence you build, right? That cannot be the be all and the end all. Tools are a means to an end, and the end is building a hard skill set, a sure shot, future proof competence, right? So hence, you know, once you have identified an area that you want to uh, be really good at, then you build it the right way. You learn it the right way. You build it ground up with strong foundations. And uh, as a part of that entire learning experience, you also learn tools and technologies. The other um, realization that we want all candidates to have is that these emerging areas that I mentioned earlier, whether it is analytics or big data or machine learning or artificial intelligence, uh, any of these areas, we have to understand that these are hard skills to build and they are hard for a reason. The reason is that these are not superficial. You cannot scratch the surface and hope that you know, you're going to get a fantastic outcome. Right. If you want outcomes, if you want to uh, do well in your career in these areas, then you have to go deep. And the deeper you go, you realize that, uh, you know, many of these areas are multidisciplinary in nature. Right. So, you know, uh, someone who's coming from a programming background might uh, plunge into big data thinking that, oh, it's just another programming tool or language. But uh, you are going to be disappointed because that is not the case. Right? Big data analytics is not just about you know a, a technology stack that you learn. It is also a lot about uh, you know uh, machine learning and deep learning and art artificial intelligence and visualization and so on, uh, which is a lot beyond uh, you know pure programming. So hence these are multidisciplinary in nature and thereby they are hard to learn, hard to acquire, uh, and uh, the only sure shot way of learning these is by applying yourself. So the more time you spend to learn them, the more time you spend to practice what you have done to showcase your work, you know, the better you will get it. So in, what is important as a takeaway from this point is that don't go into, uh, you know, learning something, hoping that you're going to learn it in 30 hours or 40 hours or 50 hours, because in 30 hours, you cannot learn analytics. I can assure you that in 30 hours, you cannot learn big data either. Right. What you can learn is probably some applications of a tool on, on a given set of techniques. Uh, but then that is not, you know, what, what you have learned essentially just to solve an example, right? You have not really built that competence. And, and the day you step into an interview looking for a job, uh, you will get this realization when, when, you know, your recruiter will ask you questions and you won't be able to answer. So hence don't go for a shortcut. Uh, give it the time, the importance, the commitment it merits and work hard on it, and then you will be in a position to reap its rewards. The other important aspect here is that as you work in companies, uh, make yourself more visible. And, and what do I mean by that? First of all, once you start learning a new skill set, um, as you start you know, learning it the right way, which is what I focused on in the previous slide about, you know, building a strong foundation, doing a lot of examples, exercises, application, and thereby building it, you know, ground up. See how you can build a body of work. Uh, you know, a body of work is essentially like a portfolio where you can showcase what you've done. Imagine, you know, if you were a developer, what GitHub does for you, uh, you know, so something like that is what your body of work is going to be. As time progresses, you should be able to add more to that body of work and it should only really get uh, you know, more and more in terms of what you can showcase to the outside world. 
but it is important that you are able to demonstrate it right if you remember we started by saying that competence is something you can demonstrate right so hence it is important for you to showcase what have you learned and what have you done for you or for others to believe in you the second aspect is that start participating in hackathons competitions uh, you know a forum like kaggle has so many uh, data science contests that happen participate very actively in discussion forums and meetups you know so start building that network start gaining that knowledge gain more exposure and it is important because what happens is as you keep doing this you will keep getting getting better at it and especially from things such as meetups and discussion forums you never know uh, you know the outcomes that even a simple discussion can have a lot of our candidates we have seen uh, you know they work very hard especially you know the ones who are coming from it and want to transition to analytics um, especially after you know some years of experience we see that they work doubly hard to improve their visibility within their own organizations and one way that we help them do it in our programs is through capstone projects where you are able to showcase a project that you're doing uh, you know and people showcase it to their peers to their managers bring them in the loop so everybody gets to know that uh, you know you are learning uh, the skill set and more importantly you are learning it the right way which means over a period of time you are going to build this competence and you know hopefully you can be used in projects that require that skill set the other aspect uh, for you to really uh, do well is start contributing to a community uh, in that area and communities uh, online communities exist uh, you know right from linkedin to meetups to uh, to any of those discussion forums or even uh, you know um, competition forums like kaggle there are all kinds of communities that are there uh, where people are helping out each other and as you start doing that you will start gaining recognition and in fact in our, in our own example we have seen we have seen examples of students who got fantastic international job offers just because of their activity on kaggle and how actively they were contributing to that community right because that gets valued a lot finally the most important question you need to ask is what is your personal brand that you as a professional what do you stand for you know what should people respect you for so if you are working in an organization in a large team what should all others view you as an expert of you know what should they come to you and come to you for so i think those those are the questions that will help you pick a skill set or a competence that you want to build and then uh, you know keep you motivated uh, to learning that skill set and building your expertise you know day in and day out this has been our uh, you know motto over the past 4 uh, 4 and a half years wherein we've helped thousands of professionals build such hard competencies hard skill sets and achieve the career outcomes that they've wanted and that's what we call as uh, the great learning impact so at great learning we are on a mission to make every professional data proficient and that's why we have a variety of programs that go into uh, that straddle across uh, you know technology and deep learning to all the way to uh, business and uh, uh, you know data driven decision making because we believe that every knowledge worker has to be data driven and data proficient and we are on a mission to help everyone be that over our existence we have seen several thousands of professionals take uh, you know multiple of our programs and uh, recently uh, we have delivered 1 million learning hours in analytics and big data so you can imagine the scale Uh, of education that we have imparted uh, we have learning centers in six cities bangalore chennai hyderabad gurgaon pune and bombay where professionals attend our blended programs which are essentially uh, weekend classes and online sessions uh, our programs uh, as of today are offered in collaboration with top institutions um, from india it's great lakes which is one of india's top 10 business schools consistently ranked in the top 10 and we are also internationally recognized so a lot of our candidates also move countries and they come from in fact we also have international candidates pursuing our programs and our programs are internationally recognized by illinois institute of technology chicago uh, it's a matter of great pride that our business analytics and data science program they've been ranked number 1 for 2 uh, years in running now and uh, our peers in that program are established well known institutions such as uh, im bangalore and isb and we've been consistently ranked ahead of them 
uh, our faculty because of their good work and the experience that they've imparted over the years uh, are now ranked again amongst top 10 analytics faculty in India. Again, uh, aside of IIM Ahmedabad, uh, we are the only institution to have two analytics faculty ranked within top 10 and both happen to be program directors of our courses. So at Great Learning, if you wish to learn analytics or pick up a data-driven skill, uh, we have created programs such that there are multiple learning paths depending upon your comfort, your level of expertise, what you want to learn and what mode you want to learn in. Uh, so we have four different programs. Uh, the first program is a postgraduate program in business analytics which is a one year long program. It is a blended program which means it's a mix of both weekend classroom sessions as well as online sessions. And uh, here the objective is to train you and skill you on analytics and data science. This is the program that I was mentioning earlier, which wherein we've been ranked number one in India. We've been ranked as the best analytics and data science program in India for the past two years. Uh, we have another program that is focused on technology professionals, which is a postgraduate program in big data. It is one of its kind of program uh, in the country today because here the focus is not merely on teaching you uh, <clears throat> tech stack, which we of course do but it is also a lot about going beyond that. So we train candidates in areas such as machine learning and visualization, which is the reason why a lot of technology professionals pursue this program and also a lot of companies look at um, hiring candidates from this program. We also have an executive MBA program, which is again a blended program, a mix of uh, weekend classroom and online sessions. And here um, the objective again is to help you uh, become a data-driven manager and we have new age specializations such as analytics, product management, operations, finance and digital marketing. Again, this program is now one of India's largest executive MBA programs with uh, classes happening in multiple centers and uh, hundreds of professionals doing it every year. And finally, we have an online analytics program which is a business analytics certification. There's a six month online program and the way it has been designed is that we have learned from all the experiences of uh, you know, online education providers and try to come up with what we believe is the best way to learn online. So the content here is from India's best analytics faculty that we have. And but beyond that, what we do is that we also every candidate gets exclusive mentorship hours wherein they are mentored by, um, you know, industry professionals working in analytics. So you have a direct access to analytics professionals working in the industry who not only help you learn analytics, but also guide you in your career choices and uh, career counseling. And every candidate gets about 40 hours of personalized mentorship through this. Beyond this, uh, what you also, the way you learn is that you learn not just theoretically, but you learn through a lot of projects. So throughout the six months, you will end up doing six to seven projects on different areas, right from, uh, you know, Twitter data to, uh, to cap data, to all different kinds of projects, whether it is financial risk, whether it is market basket analysis, whether it is journal analysis, which means by the time you uh, finish the program, again, it is not just a paper certificate that you have, but it is also, uh, you also have something as a body of work for you to show to the outside world. And these are the reasons why it has been uh, reviewed as the best way to learn analytics online. Given our existence and uh, the scale that we've had over the years, um, we now have a very diverse and impactful alumni base. About half of our candidates, about 50% of the candidates come from IT sector. So, it, you know, so IT sector definitely contributes the maximum number of candidates wherein people come in wanting to either uh, transition to analytics or progress their career into analytics. Mm, and not just analytics, but also analytics, big data, data science, all these areas. And outside of IT, uh, the remainder of our candidates are split across BFSI, analytics, uh, retail, consulting, manufacturing, etc. Over 60% of our alumni have transitioned to roles in analytics within 6 to 12 months of graduation. So that is probably the best measure of how impactful the education is. It is also, uh, I think, not just about the way we teach, but credit must also be given to all those candidates who put in the time, effort, dedication, and commitment to learn something new, to learn a skill set, learn it the right way. And once they do that, then you know uh, opportunities are abound in today's market. 
as we stand today, we have alumni presence across all work experience brackets. So uh, we get candidates all the way from three years of experience to uh, you know, 25, 30 years of experience. Our average experience itself is about eight to nine years. So we get a lot of candidates with you know um, more than six years of experience where they've spent some amount of time in the industry and now want to build uh, a competence as we say. And today um, our alumni work across all leading Indian companies right from technology to consulting to PFSI and also MNCs. We've had several several examples of IT professionals transitioning to analytics projects within the same employer again one way that uh, that happens is through what we call as capstone projects. So every candidate in our programs, uh, you know, they you have to do a capstone project, which is a real world business problem that you solve. And as you do that, you get more exposure and more visibility. And often we've seen that uh, people, uh, you know, showcase that visibility within their existing employer and they employ and, and their managers get to see what they're doing and are often impressed by what they've learned. And that's how they're able to transition. All right, so that uh, brings me to the end of uh, the deck that I had. Uh, I hope I've been able to cover uh, the questions uh, or at least some of the questions that you have in mind. All right, so with that, uh, let me draw this session to a close. Uh, once again, thank you all for your participation. It was wonderful having you uh, participate in this. I know it's a, it's a Thursday afternoon, so probably all of you are in office and I truly appreciate the time that you've taken out for this. I sincerely hope that this session was useful for you and has uh, helped in allaying some fears or some apprehensions that you had. I'd love to hear from you uh, with any questions or clarifications or any further information that you'd like to know about us or about what the future ho could hold for you or for professionals in the IT sector as was the topic uh, of this webinar. Uh, so I have mentioned my email ID here. Feel free to write in to me. I'll, I'll be more than happy to assist you. And we also have the admissions contact details for all those uh, folks who are interested in knowing more about our programs and would like to take admissions if it's the same. Once again, thank you again for your time and participation. Um, I hope to interact with all of you in the near future as well. Thank you. All the best.